Good evening and welcome from Pacific Science Center. I'm Zita Strickland. I'm Paul Chioko. We're going to be your host tonight for virtual trivia. So thanks for joining us. Uh, before we start tonight's event, uh, I want to make sure to share a few bits of information. If you haven't already, make sure to download the free Kahoot app on your smartphone or your tablet so you can play along. It can be easily found in the App Store. Once you download and open the app, you'll see um, an enter pin section. It's gonna be like the small multicolored square at the bottom of your phone screen. Select that and enter our game pin, which is 425271. We'll also be sharing that in the chat section. Just make sure to keep this live stream going. Keep the window open on your laptop or desktop um, and you'll wanna use your tablet or smartphone to answer the questions. Once you've downloaded the app, entered the game pin, you'll be given a screen name at random. Um, if you don't like it, you can spin in the wheel and get another one. I see our first one came up, Mountain Egret is in, Genus Fox is in. Um, so spin away, bring up your names. Uh, we're glad to have you. So just a few notes on tonight's format. We've got 30 questions for you and they're broken down into five rounds with six questions in each round and each round has a theme. For each question, you're gonna hear the question and see it, and you're gonna see multiple choice answers. You're gonna have 30 seconds to answer the question right into your Kahoot app. Now, points are awarded based not just on whether or not you get it right, but also at the speed in which you answer the question. So you're gonna have to be speedy to get the big points. Now, there is a short lag between the quiz and our live stream, but that's the same leg that everybody has seen, so it's not giving anybody a clear advantage. Um, I do have an advantage because I have the answers, but there's no advantage with the lag or disadvantage that's happening. The themes for tonight are going to be plants, geology, space, animals, questions about PAXI, and questions coming from our event sponsors, including questions about beer. Now, the last thing, of course, is this is the honor system. So don't Google anything. See that? So tonight's event is sponsored by First Tech Federal Credit Union. First Tech is committed to supporting the next generation of leaders, thinkers, and innovators. And it's been a longtime partner of PAXI. Their support has made happy hour programs like this one possible. And many of the other PAXI experiences that you miss, we all miss, including the Hive, uh, where startups and residents showcase their latest inventions and what is reality involving experiences that highlight immersive technologies. Yeah, we wanna thank everybody at First Tech and the First Tech members for your commitment to education, research, and innovation. And you can learn more about this at firsttechfed.com. We also wanna highlight Fremont Brewery who partnered with us for this event. We hope that you've had a chance to pick up your favorite Fremont beer and they've generously decided to donate a portion of each sale to pack Psy. Even if you don't have I'm a beer. drinking water because I'm, I'm working tonight, but I'll be sure to go to Fremont Brewing later. It is a happy hour. And it's warm enough, I think, water can make you happy. So that is also great. Um, programming like this tonight is made part in thanks, huge thanks to the generous support of our donors. For more than 50 years, pack Psy has been igniting curiosity in kids and adults on a whole range of topics, virtual reality, um, space, butterflies, insects, climate change, and even beer. Well, let's be really clear. Science and an informed public are humanity's best hopes in addressing COVID-19, climate change, and a whole host of other threats. While our doors are closed to the public, we're still serving the community with Curiosity at Home and other programs we can deliver digitally like this one. We need your help to do it. PAXI depends on charitable support from the community, especially now. Thank you to those who have already made a gift. I ask you now to consider donating by going to paxi.org support. If you're able to, we suggest a $10 donation for tonight's event to help us ensure that curiosity never closes. And now we are about to get started. But before we do, we want to make sure there's any last minute Kahoot app downloaders are all caught up. You've got the app, you've downloaded it, you've opened it, 
You've hit the small multicolored square at the bottom of the screen and you've entered the pin, which tonight is 425271. You've selected your name. I am Wise Horse. And I think that that means that we are ready. Paul, can you tell, see how many people do we have in? We have 43 players so far. I see Purple Wombat. I see Royal Newt. I see Legend uh, Rapid Alpaca. Uh, so we've got a lot of folks in here, 46 players in so far. So this is good, 47. This is awesome. I think we should get started here. I'm going to... I think so. Are, are, they, are they still coming in? They're still coming in. I've got now 48. It's kind of slow. So uh, we can give it another minute, I think. I think we should give it another minute, but for everybody who's still slowly entering, remember, you have to answer your questions quickly for the max amount of points. That's um, right. I do think, what was it, a speed alpaca? I feel like they're gonna have an edge, or rapid alpaca? I don't know, but what about the clever macaw? I mean, when you gotta be really smart and clever to answer a lot of these questions. That is true, that's very true. Um, what do you think my odds are as wise horse? You know, I know you well, Zita, and um, I, I think you're going to do really well in this game. I think so. It, it helps that I know what the answers are. It does. You have one advantage, so that's good. I have the answer, so I'm going to be completely fresh to this. It's going to be great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> How many do we have now? We're at 47. It's ste oh. hey, steady there. I feel I like we're, we're plateauing, a, plateauing a little bit. I think we are. Uh, oh, we went back to 48. So let's do it. Um, let's get started. Oh, now we're at 50. We've now cracked 50 players. Okay, thanks Glowing Raccoon for coming in and um, joining the game. Yeah, I, I thought they were here. They were very bright. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, everybody's got that going on. Um, don't forget that we also have a YouTube. You can make comments in the YouTube uh, chat, right? If you've got a question for anybody at Paxi, if you remember one of your favorite things at PAXI, you just want to put it into that, um, that'd be great. We'll be monitoring those all the way through the game as well. If you know anybody else who's playing and you want to talk a little smack, feel free to, you know, put that in as well. Just keep it friendly, smack. Keep it friendly, keep it friendly. Um, uh, as Zita said, we're going to be doing a couple different rounds. We're going to take a break in between. Um, so there will be time to stretch your legs, maybe go get another sip of beer. Um, and then come back for the last rounds and then we'll wrap it all up. That sounds Wait. great. I am super excited for our virtual happy hour trivia, Paul. Let's do it. Sounds I'm gonna turn off my video and I'm gonna share the screen so we can everybody can get in and see. So this first round is going to be all about plants. Okay. So we are now um, showing our screen. Hopefully everybody can see that. There it is. Oh, we're still growing in players, Paul. We've got a, um, an excited sloth. <laughs> the smart raccoon just came in. I saw that excited ostrich. That's really good. Eager. I saw, oh, there's a jolly pony. I feel like as wise horse, jolly pony and I should be friends. That's probably the case. Diligent dragon, you know that they're going to stay through to the end and answer every single question. I love it. Oh, Knowing Finch just popped in. Way to go, Knowing Finch. Glad to have you on board. The sea lions are particularly epic this type of this time of year, I've seen. Absolutely. I wonder if Stellar Badger saw our planetarium show we had earlier today. Oh, did you have a planetarium earlier today? We did, we had a planetarium show. We're gonna have another one next week. They're Wednesdays in the afternoons at 3.30, open for all ages, had some great questions about planets. So, so it's all virtual though, right? Nobody's inside the planetarium at PAXI. No one's inside the planetarium at PAXI. No, these are all virtual programs. So you can watch it right from your computer wherever you are now. Nice, excellent. I'm sure that we'll have a few of those as we go on. All right. I think we should get started with our first set of questions on plants. Um, <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna hit the start button and get ready to play. I guess we're doing a countdown, three, two, one. Now we're ready. All right, so this first set of questions is about plants. Um, 
And uh, luckily, this first image is uh, all plants that I know that I can't kill uh, because they're all um, really hardy uh, succulents. So that's good. So we're going to go to that first question and get started. Yeah, make sure you've got your Kahoot app. Again, you've got 30 seconds to answer. When did the first flower originate? When did the first flower originate? So about a million years ago, 50 million years ago, about 130 million years ago, or during the Big Bang? At 15 seconds left, folks, get those answers in. There's a few people that haven't answered yet. You got four, three, two, one. Nicely done. The correct answer is at about 130 million, um, oops, 130 million years ago, 33 of you answered that question correctly. 13 answered 50 million years ago. Nobody answered, oh, what, no, one person answered during the Big Bang. Thank you very much. I, that was my answer as well. That's what I guessed, but apparently that wasn't correct. All right, moving on to the next one. Oh, it doesn't even, Oh, awesome wombat at the top with 907 points. Well done. There's those eager lemurs. Okay. All right, next question. How fast can bamboo grow? That's going to be our question next. How fast can bamboo grow? Is it going to be 10 inches a day, 30 inches a day, 20 inches a day, or 100 inches a day. Make sure those answers get in. Side question, uh, Zita, what animal uh, favors bamboo as their main source of food? That wasn't on the question list I was given, Paul. All right, we've got just a few more seconds. Great, everybody's in. And the answer is 30 inches a day. Wow, it was a good spread of the answers across all of the, uh, across all of the answers, but it was actually 30 inches a day. Yeah, that was a tricky one, it looks like. Absolutely. Let's see how we did. Oh, bright panda jumped to the top. Lucky snail not too far behind. Awesome wombat still in the mix though. Nicely done. Does panda have something to do with the answer to the question you gave me? That's incredibly ironic that it is, isn't it? I'm glad right panda got that one then. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the next question. Which type of flower does vanilla flavoring come from? All right, so what you see up in there is uh, the picture of vanilla, and it's going to got, we've got four options, orchids, lilies, irises, and tulips. Get those answers in. Nicely done. Oh, wow, this is a really good, many people knew this one. Orchids is exactly right. 35 people answered correctly for orchids. See how it, ooh, right panda, jumping up to the, staying up at the top. Nicely done. Right panda has the highest streak, answer streak with three. Very good. All right, going on to the next one. How many species of plants have been driven to extinction by humans? Is it 10 species? Is it 50 species? 
Is it 300 species or 600 species? How many species have been, of plants have been driven to extinction by humans? I show about five seconds left. I think all of our answers are in. Nicely done, Science Center. Way to go. 600 species uh, have been uh, driven to extinction by humans, and many of you got that one right. Thank you very much. Lucky Snail jumped up. Four players just hit the answer streak of three. Nicely done. All right, I'm jumping on the next one. Fruit is made of three different layers. Which of the following is not a layer of fruit? Exocarp, mesocarp, apocarp, or endocarp. Fruit is made up of three layers. Which of the following is not a layer of fruit? This one was a tricky question, question for me. Looks like we've got all the answers. We've got 57 answers. Apocarp is not exactly right. 46 people answered that one correctly. Well done, well done. It looks like Polite Rooster is now at the top of the heap with 4,384 points. A good chunk ahead of Lucky Snail. Mountain Wolf, Wolf jumped up to the high, is the highest climber at this point, nicely done. I'm going on to the next one, and I think this is our last one. Although aspirin is now synthetically produced, it was originally extracted from a bark. What tree is that? Is it birch, willow, elm, or spruce? Which tree's bark originally produced aspirin? A little slower on the answers on this one. This is a tricky one. Five seconds left. Willow, excellent. That is the correct answer. Few people got into birch or uh, elm and spruce, but a good number everybody got into willow as the correct answer. Mountain Egret jumped up, nicely done. Polite Rooster is still in the hunt right there. We now have 10 players who have reached the answer streak. A four, well done. But politely in the hunt. Politely in the hunt, of course. <laughs> All right. Bye. I'm going to give control, is that correct? Nope, you are running, you are still running this cahoot for me. Got it. So our first one. This is going to be round two all about geology. I have to say this round rocks. Let's get into our first question. What are igneous rocks made of? So those igneous rocks that you just saw a picture of are igneous rocks made of layered sand particles, cooled and hardened magma, deposited minerals, or pressurized crystals. Igneous rocks. A lot of answers coming in very quickly on this one. This may not be a terribly rock hard question. Boom, boom. Ah, nicely done. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, oh, overwhelming win for cooled and hardened magma. That is exactly correct. Nicely done. Let's take a look and see if that has shifted our standings at all. 
few have climbed up Mount Egret, continuing to hold in the lead. Five players have hit a five answer streak. This is great. Jolly Pony also on the board. Excellent. All right, question number two for the geology round. <clears throat> what type of volcano is Mount Rainier? Beautiful Seattle skyline there, Mount Rainier in the distance. Is Mount Rainier a cinder cone volcano, a shield volcano, a composite volcano, or a lava dome? Which type of volcano is Mount Rainier? We know it is a somewhat dormant volcano. It's not actively erupting. If and when it were to erupt, which type of eruption style would it have? Ooh, four seconds left, everybody. Ooh, answers coming in right up to the end. Very even split, um, but composite volcano, it is. It does have alternating eruption periods where it's more lava or other ones where it's more cinder um, or more ash. And so it's, it's a composite because it's multiple layers like that over time. Excellent, well done. Mount Egret is on fire with this answer streak of seven. Mountain Wolf has joined. That's kind of fitting for a mountain related question that we just had. Let's see if these standings change with question number three. Pangea was surrounded by a super ocean called what? Pangea being the landmass previously on Earth, all land was one giant supercontinent surrounded by a super ocean called Merovia, Gyrosia, Larovia, or Panthalassa. What is the name of that super ocean? This I think could be a tricky one. A lot of people are very familiar with Pangea, but what is the ocean called? I certainly had to look this one up as well and think how to get the answer to that or how to even say that answer. That's right. And I think I always mispronounce this particular one. So if you're right now throwing things at your computer screen, I apologize. But most of you did know this one, uh, Panthalassa. Panthalassia? <laughs> All right, I may not be able to say it, but I can say that Mountain Egret remains in the lead. Uh, Mountain Wolf is still there as well. A smart raccoon, very smart, climbing up. All right, next question for our geology round. Also related to geology round here, what type of boundary occurs when two plates slide past each other? We know the sliding of plates can cause earthquakes, what is it called when the two plates are sliding past each other? Is it a divergent boundary, a convergent boundary, a transform boundary, or a drift boundary? All of these types of boundaries can cause an earthquake because as those slay plates slide past each other, they sometimes will get stuck. They move very, very slowly, only a couple centimeters a year. When they get stuck, that pressure will build until the plates suddenly move, causing that earthquake. It is a transform boundary. You can actually, I love this, you can model this with your hands. When the two plates are coming together, it's convergent. When they're going apart, that's divergent, and that's happening in sea floor spreading areas, like in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the Atlantic Ocean, um, or they can slide past each other. And we right here in Seattle have both the transform boundary, but also the conversion as our ocean plate is coming towards our land plate going underneath and then actually causing volcanoes when that magma melts and heads up. And then we're connected back to our previous answer of Mount Rainier with types of volcanoes. All right. You've got, you got a lot of these uh, answers really well done. It seems like you've got some geology in your background or something. A, a, sp a small amount. Um, <laughs> and I live in a very geologically active area. Um, ooh, that was a tough one for a lot of people. Um, only three players have an answer streak of eight. Eager Lemur has moved up eagerly, and Dazzled Ant is dazzled by the geology. <laughs> Next question in the geology area. When magma reaches the Earth's surface and it cools, it forms rocks. Which of the following rocks 
can't be formed above the Earth's surface. So we have magma down below, it comes up, it cools. Some rocks can't be formed above the Earth's surface. Is that diorite, andesite, obsidian, or basalt? We name rocks in part based on their mineral composition, but also on the form that they can take based on whether or not they cool quickly or slowly, which one can't be formed above the Earth's surface. And the answer is, it is diorite. Obsidian cools very quickly above the Earth's surface, as does basalt, as does andesite. But diorite, in order to form, has to cool slowly, so it has to stay below the Earth's surface. That was a tricky one for sure. Not trick, though, was Eager Lever. Um, genius Fox climbing up the mountain now. Uh, Purple Wombat has joined the leaderboard. Excellent. Well done, everybody. All right, final question in the geology round. The most recent major earthquake in Washington state was in 2001 with a magnitude of 6.8. Where was its epicenter? So where was the point above where the most energy of this earthquake happened? Was it Seattle, Olympia, Spokane, or Vancouver? Were you in town for that earthquake? I was. I happened to, at just that time, I happened to be in Idaho. I missed it. The epicenter was in Olympia. Yep, I was in town. I definitely felt the shaking. It was a very interesting experience. It was my first big earthquake. All right, so that was Olympia. And let's take a look. And Genius Fox has moved into the lead with a huge streak of 10 correct answers in a row. Genius Fox truly is a genius, but it is not over yet. We still have three more rounds to go. Great. I think we're going to go on to space at this point. Go on to the next round. Do you want it? Um, uh, after, after space, we'll take a break. Does that sound right? Uh, that Zita? sounds perfect to me. Okay, we're gonna go on to space. Um, appreciate, uh, you can't see now, but I've got my globe behind me. So we're gonna go on to the space round. I love a good space round. Absolutely. The first question is, Jupiter has many rotating storms. What does NASA, NASA informally call these storms? Informally call these storms. So Jupiter has many rotating storms. What does NASA informally call these? Are they swirls, pearls, clouds, or donuts? Ooh, this is a slow one, folks. I, now, folks, there not, better not be any Googling going on right now. Well, from what I'm seeing in the chat, people are acknowledging uh, Tatum is not acknowledging their eighth grade earth science teacher would be crying at their performance right now. <laughs> uh, a couple of other people have noted that the plant rep brown was pretty brutal. So I think people are not Googling. <laughs> okay, this was definitely tricky. The correct answer was actually pearls. Um, but uh, most of you chose swirls as the answer. Um, a few extra on the donuts, though the, I could see the donuts, right? With the great eye, it makes sense to me, but um, it, the correct answer was pearls. What did that do to our leaderboard? Mount Egret back up at the top with 9,963 points. The genius fox is not too far behind. All right, we're gonna go on to the second question in our space round. No aircraft, spacecraft has gone farther from the Earth than Voyager 1. What year was it launched? 
No spacecraft has gone farther from the Earth than Voyager 1. What year was it launched? Is it 1958, 1977, 1981, or 1990? Now, of course, the keen eyes will know that what's on your screen right now is not Voyager 1. I think that's not Voyager 2 either. We've got most of our answers in. Nicely done, folks, with just a few seconds to go. And the answer is 1977, correct. Well done. It's amazing to think that in 1977, we were able to design that spacecraft to get out as far as it has. How does that do for our leaderboard? Mount Egret stays up at the top, but uh, we've got another mountain wolf still up there as well. Genius Fox holding on. All right, we're gonna go to the next round. Which planet in our solar system has the longest day? Which planet in our solar system has the longest day? Here come the set of answers. Mercury, Venus, Mars, or Jupiter? This, I feel like, is a little bit of a trick question here, Zita. Well, why, why, is, why is that, Paul? Because my first way to answer this, I was going to answer something else, and then I had to read the question again. Ah. And, right? It was the first thing that occurred to me. All right, just a few seconds to go. I think all of our answers are in. In fact, the answer is Venus. Venus is the correct answer, the longest day. Now, a few of you uh, answered uh, Mercury or Mars and Jupiter, um, but in fact, it's, it's Venus. That was a tricky one because I was going to answer something like Jupiter because it has, uh, it's pretty far away, it goes around, but I was thinking that's the year it goes around. So it's not good. That's, that's exactly right. And Venus is kind of a weird one because it's a year on Venus lasts for about 225 of our Earth days, but a day on Venus lasts for 240 of our Earth days. Oh, so that just blows my mind. No, its what? day is longer than its year. It's <laughs> crazy. Awesome. Okay, how does that do for our? Uh, oh, Mountain Egret stays up there, and Mountain Wolf right next to it. All right, well done. Genius Fox dropped down a little bit, but Soaring Finch is up 18 places, Got the, as that, that's the highest climber right now. Well done. All right, here we go. Our next question. People trained and certified by the Russian Space Agency are called cosmonauts. <coughs> Excuse me. What is the translated term for people trained and certified by the China National Space Administration? So of course we have astronauts here and in Russia they are cosmonauts, but those who are trained in China are called astronauts, spaceman, taikonaut, or spationaut. Just a few more seconds to go. Would you ever go into space, Sita? If given the opportunity, absolutely. Absolutely, me too. <laughs> Everybody has answered, and it's a tie uh, in the answers between Spaceman and Tychonaut, uh, and the answer is actually Tychonaut. I agree with you. I'd be right up there. The minute I could get up into space, I think it'd be amazing. Mountain Egret and Mountain Wolf still battling it out there. Genius Fox jumps back up to third place. Well done. All right, we're going to go on to our very last question in this round. Cosmonaut Valery Polyakov holds the record for the most consecutive days in space. How many days did he spend in space consecutively? So, the record for the most consecutive days in space by a Russian cosmonaut. Is it 156 days, 283 days, 340 days, or 437 days? 
I, I, I'm willing to go to space. I don't think I'm willing to go for 437 or I don't even think I could do 156 days in space. That's true. I mean, 156 days, that's nearing uh, quarantine length right now. <laughs> and, right, that's true. Maybe that's maybe I could do it and I don't even realize. And actually, the answer is 437 days. And 40 of you got that answer right. Nicely done. Yeah, that's 14 months in one stay on oh, the near space station. Combined, he has been in space for 22 months, which is amazing. Wow. That's incredible. Mountain Wolf jumps up ahead of Mountain Egret. Wow. All right. We've got a game going on now. Eager Lieber. Lemur is still up there. Genius Fox still with us. All right. Four players have that streak. I think we're taking a break now. Is that correct? I think we actually have one more space question. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's do it. We're going from the longest to the shortest, but don't cut it out. It's not that short. It's not that short. That's true. The shortest space flight mission lasted just 15 minutes. With which spacecraft did this mission occur? The shortest space flight was just 15 minutes. Is it from Freedom 7, Faith 7, Gemini 7, or Apollo 7. Now we have a spacecraft at the Science Center um, and uh, that was one of my favorite memories of going there with my daughter when she was younger to be able to sit in that spacecraft. Yeah, it's amazing how, you know, I can, I can imagine sitting in something, you know, fairly small for just 15 minutes, but some of the missions that use those spacecrafts were much longer. Yes, absolutely. All right, everybody's got their answers in. The, act, the correct answer is Freedom 7. Many people answer Gemini 7. Um, uh, and, and in fact, it's Freedom 7. It's very early on in the, the space program. Yeah, it was the first manned um, uh, mission with the Mercury astronauts. Oh, right. The, the, the astronauts went up in uh, Freedom 7. Holy cow, I can't even imagine what it was like to think. They had no idea what was going to happen next. Yeah, that was Alan Shepard, first American. 15 minutes, probably a very, very scary 15 minutes. <laughs> I would think so. All right, well, nothing scary about our scoreboard, I don't think. Mountain Wolf stays right up at the top. Nicely done. Lucky Lion is back in the game with three in a row. Well done. We've got our set right here. Uh, these are the people to answer. So we've got a few more uh, rounds to go. We've got animals and our partners in beer questions. So those of you who are uh, looking, get, uh, get some extra beer, uh, bone up on your animals, and uh, we'll see you again on the, after the break um, and see if we can catch up to Mountain Wolf. Yeah, we're just gonna take about a five minute break. So don't go too far, but it is a happy hour. So refill if you need to, stretch break, restroom break. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes.
All right, everybody. Welcome back. We're not going to get started with the questions right away. We know some people are taking a little bit of a break, doing, you know, doing a little stretch, what they need to do. So for everyone who's back um, and joining back, and for you, Paul, I have a little science to show you. Okay, you ready? I am. Okay, so I have a cup. Yep. I'm going to pour some water. Oh, it makes me thirsty. Wait a minute. Into this cup. It is a happy hour after all. And I'm going to mm -hmm. pour the water into another cup. Yeah, the water's in that cup now. Yeah, right. It's in this cup. Yeah. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. What? It, it was in that and the one on the left. <laughs> or my, my left. You're right. Yeah, it went in there. Yeah. Okay, stop. And what? now, where is it? It's, act, it's actually still in here. Um, this, I had something in the cup that I didn't show you was in the cup. Um, I have a little something called sodium polyacrylate. So I'm gonna show you this again, but this time I'm gonna use a clear. Oh, nice, jar. okay, cool. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, you can see that, a little bit of powder into that clear jar. Um, sodium. And then in a, another empty jar, I'm gonna pour my water into this jar. Okay, so. Jar of water, jar with the white powder. Got it. We'll pour from one, we'll pour back into the other. Oh my God, <laughs> instantaneous. Yeah, it's really, really fast. So this is sodium polyacrylate. It's a super absorbent compound. Um, it's a molecule um, and it absorbs 100 to 500 times its weight in water. Um, it becomes, um, it's sometimes also called fake snow because it sort of has that like wow. snowy type consistency. Yeah, look at that. Um, but it's commonly used in something that is not in everybody's house, but in a lot of people's houses where you might need to absorb liquid. Oh, I did this very poorly. I don't have a napkin or anything in this little. <laughs> <laughs> what is use this tablecloth over here? Um, so what can you think that you might have, um, parents especially might have something that they want to absorb liquid? Oh, is it is that what's in the diapers when when a kid's diaper? Yeah, so this is really commonly used in a lot of things, but um, diaper is one of the most common uses um, because it is that super absorbent, and you can even you know add in a little more. Look at that! That's amazing. And the only pieces that fell off were the pieces that I had like pulled off earlier. Sure. So yeah, yeah. I can keep adding to this, and it'll just keep absorbing because it is, it is a super absorbent polymer. Not just kind of absorbent, but super absorbent. Is that something so, that's been known for a long time or is that more recent, do you know? Oh, like when was it initially discovered? That's a great question. I'm actually not sure about that one. We'll see if I can find an answer during, during side rounds. Well, let's, let's invite our friends uh, on trivia. This would be the one time you could go to Google and search out, what is the name of the, of the chemical again? Sodium polyacrylate. Nice. Cool. Yeah, it's one of my it's one of my favorite um, compounds just because it's it's so absorbent and it's pretty fun. Well, I'm right. getting ready to uh, begin round four. I think everybody is back. So round four, all about animals. All right, I'm going to share the screen so everybody can see what we're doing. This is great. My fingers are a little bit sticking out. All right, so. Mountain wolf is right now on top of the mountain. Mountain egret is right on the mountain too, but eager lemur and genius fox, and there's a purple wombat that are climbing up after you. So let's see what happens in round four, animals. Oh, so cute. I, I would pet one of these for sure. All right, so question one, what color are polar bears under their white fur? They have the white fur so that they blend into the snow and it's easier to, you know, sneak up on seals. But underneath that white fur, are polar bears white, black, brown, or pink? That polar bear looks happy to be in that snow. They're very happy, it seems to me. All right, let's see if all of our answers are happy after this question result comes in. 
more, many of them are, it is wow. black. Yeah, that black skin helps to absorb heat and keep them warm in a pretty hostile and cold environment. All right, so did that change our leaderboard? It did a little bit. Glowing Raccoon is now on the board and Glowing Meerkat has an answer streak. So we've got some glowing animals coming in. All right, question number two in the animal round. Our heart weighs less than a pound. How much does a giraffe's heart weigh? I don't know, are giraffes known for their compassion? I don't think it's the compassion part, it's the blood pumping part, don't you think? <laughs> so is it 10 pounds, 50 pounds, five pounds, or 25 pounds? Yeah. And this would be an average adult giraffe. There's probably some variation. Mm -hmm. Your average adult giraffe, how many pounds does their heart weigh? I wonder if there's any giraffe named teams that we have. Okay. I haven't seen any. That's right. I, I wish we could go back and see. The answer is 25 pounds. Yeah, you make a really good point that they, it needs to be a powerful heart to pump blood all the way up that tall neck and into the head and the brain. So it is a substantially sized heart, 25 pounds. No giraffe made it to the leaderboard for this one, but Dr. Snail is slowly climbing, but consistently. <laughs> All right, animal round number three. Which of the following big cats can't roar? Of all the big cats, which one can't roar? Is it a cheetah, a leopard, a jaguar, or a tiger? I don't think that I knew that there was a big cat that couldn't roar. I and think I feel like I've heard that before. Now I do want to Google and see if it can't roar, what does it do? I hope it, it, right. it squeaks or meows maybe. Right, or the, uh, the purr. Oh, purr would be good too. It is a cheetah. Okay, I apparently mm -hmm. was <laughs> one of the few who didn't know this. Nicely done, 28 people answering correctly that it is a cheetah. After this, I'll Google search. Um, did that change our standings? It did not. Mountain wolf <laughs> at the top. But we do have a charming turtle now. So let's see if our charming turtle is able to continue with their streak in the next question. What do camel humps actually store? We know they store something. Does a camel in its hump store protein, water, fat, or sugar? Again, this is a good one for the difference between popular movies uh, and uh, good understanding of science. Yep. We know that the camels, deserts are hard environment. They have to use their humps also because they don't have trunks. Uh, it is fat. That is exactly correct. And 43 people getting that answer correctly. They store fat in their hump. Um, Mount Egret still in the lead. This is a tough round. We have three players that have lost their streak. A um, little fun fact showed up from the chat is that cheetahs are the only big cat that can purr. So thank you, Nicholas, for that answer. Thank you, Nicholas. Which of the following is not an amphibian? We're gonna name four animals now. One of them is not an amphibian. Is that the toad, salamander, cassalian, or lizard? One of these things is not like <laughs> the other. I promise I'm only drinking iced tea. Oh, that's good. All right, answers are coming in. A few coming in right at the end. Oh, I'm nervous for you. Oh, nice. <laughs> Fantastic. Lizard is not an amphibian. That is absolutely correct. 45 of you knew that. 
I'm not sure that this is going to have a huge change in our standings with that many right answers, but let's take a well look. Well done. Oh. <laughs> oh, with one round less left, we'll have to see if these holes, it is interesting, our two mountain climbers are at the top of the scoreboard, but not that far ahead of mountain lemur, glowing raccoons, and a very happy pony. All right, let's do this. Last round. As we said, the last round is more uh, about uh, Paxi, about our partners, and a few other things. So uh, sort of a, a general round. How many times? Oh, <laughs> this is still an animal question. <laughs> oh, we've got an animal question. We've got oh, yes. an animal question. We were so excited about the beer questions. We totally we were. Hummingbird. How many times can a hummingbird flap its wings per second? We're still an animal round. Look at that. That's nothing to do with Paxi. I have a hummingbird feeder outside my window. I've never counted. But is it 100 times a second, 30 times in a second, 50 times in a second, or 80 times in a second? I will say I am working from home most of the time and, and I now have a window out looking out over my backyard and there are quite a few hummingbirds. I can't count their wing flaps, but I just love them zipping by and going all around the neighborhood. And they chirp. I have some hummingbirds that uh, visit yes. my house that are actually quite noisy. They are in fact, yeah. A big sound for a small animal. It is 80 times in a second, um, second most chosen answer. Now let's take a look at our results. And there was a change going, leaving the last question of this round um, with an eager lemur and a smart panda who worked their way up into the leaderboard. Um, and now I think we're ready for our round with questions regarding the Science Center and our partners and beer because Fremont Brewery is one of our partners for tonight. Great, awesome. Okay, let's get into this round. See if we can change that leaderboard. As many of you know, uh, our arena was just renamed. Uh, there's Paxi in the distance over there in this architectural image of the Climate Pledge Arena. The question is, how much does the historic roof of the Climate Pledge Arena weigh? How much does the historic roof of Climate Pledge Arena weigh? Is it 27 million pounds, 38 million pounds, 53 million pounds or 44 million pounds. Yeah, this is one of the amazing things about this construction is that the yeah. roof is the original roof from when it was Kia Arena. It's being preserved. They're basically yep. holding the roof up as they're digging out and remodeling everything underneath it. And going deeper to get more seats in there, but keeping that roof as it is. So it's amazing to watch how they're keeping that roof there. That the answer is 44 million pounds. So think about that 44 million pounds that they're holding up as they dig underneath and get rid of all that stuff underneath there. Um, 16 of you answered that question correctly. Uh, 29 of you were at 38 million pounds. What does that do? Mountain Wolf for the first time out of the top two. Eager Lemur is still in there and Smart Panda. We were counting on Smart Panda early on, weren't we? They're, it, it, they are quite smart. All right, question number two. Um, this is a question that actually comes to us from one of our science communication fellows, uh, Dr. Angela Katsuyama. And so this question from our fellow, thank you so much. Which of these is sleep not important for? Is sleep not important for our memory and learning, our immune system, our limbs, or our alertness. I look at this picture of the person sleeping and all I can think right now is that's way too thick of a comfort for this week. <laughs> for this time of year, absolutely. And of course, nobody in Seattle has air conditioning. Nobody in anything that's been built more than a few years ago, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, good job, folks. <laughs> Nicely done.
More points accumulated, but not a change to the overall standings. Witty Ekanida? How do you say that? Is making a comeback with three in a row. I think that's a witty echidna. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next question. How many breweries are there currently in Washington State? Pay attention to the words here. How many breweries are there in Washington State? Is it 404, 835, 56, and 557? The, the real question is how many have we actually visited, right? Not enough, I think. Is Not the clearly yeah. enough. Most of our answers are in with just a few more seconds to go. A good even split. Uh, the correct answer is in fact 404. And our friends at um, Fremont Brewing indicated that the current count is 430 Washington brewery locations. But the actual number is 404 because the brewery names, for example, Fremont has two brewing locations and Ram has five locations. The number we went with was 404. So this was a tricky one. What does that do to our standings? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, but Glowing Raccoon has the highest answer streak at six questions answered. Ooh. Nicely done. I think we're on to another beer round, a beer question. We really should. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of beers here in this image, um, which is not the name of a beer style. So many different styles of beer. They all have so many different names, but one of these is not an actual name of a style of beer. Is it Zweckel beer, Schacht's beer, Oktoberfest, or Rot beer? I'm Ooh, sure. this one stumped some people, I think. There was a, I know there was a, there was a big pause there at the beginning, yeah. And I'm sure that there's some correct answer for the exact kind of beer that goes into the exact kind of glass too. Absolutely, there is for sure with cocktails. So there is definitely with beer. Um, the correct answer is Schacht beer is not an actual style of beer. Um, Oktoberfest is a beer style, um, but that did trick a lot of people. Oh, I think the yes. only thing to do is to sample all of them and make a determination. Really? I think that's the wise. That's the wisest choice. You are a wise. Wasn't you a wise horse? Yeah, there you go. I'm a scientist. I believe in repeated trials. Um, that was the question that has moved Mountain Egret out of the lead spot, but not by very much. So good job, Glowing Raccoon. And two questions left. This is anybody's game. Anybody's game at this point. Here we go. This comes to us from our partners. Um, uh, Ravensburger, Candyland was created by Eleanor Abbott while convalescing in the hospital after contracting a disease in 1948. Jonas Salk would eventually create a vaccine for this disease in 1955. So what was the disease that Jonas Salk created a vaccine for? Smallpox, cholera, polio, or rabies? I had no idea that Candyland was created while someone was convalescing. I'm not sure that I realized it was created that long ago either. What's really great is uh, our partners over at uh, Ravensburger, oh, I'll tell this in a minute, exactly right, polio. Polio is the correct answer that Jonas saw created the vaccine for in 1955. Well done. Keeps the standings as that is. What I was saying was um, our partners over at Ravensburger are actually going to be doing a science in the city on game development on August 4th. Uh, so hopefully everybody can join us for that as well. That's right, that's a free event. Um, you do just need to register in advance, just like you did for tonight, to get the link to be able to watch that live stream. 
be great, great opportunity to ask a lot of questions too about how games are developed. All right. All right. This, I believe, is our last question of the night. So Climate Pledge Arena will be eliminating all gas combustion systems, including those used in domestic hot water, space heating, dehumidification, and cooking. How many pounds of CO2 emissions will this strategy save? It's a big building. There are a lot of different things. How many pounds of CO2 emissions will be saved? Is it 850,000 pounds, 1,720,000 pounds, 1,460,000 pounds, or 1 million pounds? A lot of CO2 that will be saved. Um, there's a lot of really interesting technology that they're including in Climate Pledge Arena to make these changes. We're actually going to have a science in the city on August 18th, also looking at the architecture in the building and how to make this a green building. It's really hard for an ice arena. Close in the answers. Uh, it is the correct answer is 1,720,000 pounds of CO2 emissions will be saved through these strategies. Um, let's see if this impacted the final set. All right, Mountain Wolf in third place. Mountain Egret in second place. And our first place tonight is Glowing Raccoon. Coming from behind. Last round, that is great. Eager Lemur and a Smart Panda are the runner-ups. Now, if you won, if you didn't win, don't go anywhere yet because we do have one more thing that we need you to do. All right, so we're gonna hold on the screen. One more thing to do, but first, Paul, we do have some comments. That's right. Um, we're going to leave this screen up so that somebody can screenshot it and tell all your friends. But before we go, we want to extend our heartfelt thanks to all of you for joining us. Thanks to our event sponsor, First Tech Federal Credit Union, and our event partners, Fremont Brewing, Ravensburger, OVG, which is the builder, um, Oakview Group of the Climate Pledge Arena, and our science communication fellows. I, uh, we hope you enjoyed tonight's event. We'd love to hear your feedback, too. Uh, fill out a short survey. I think we're going to put that link into the YouTube. We'll also email you out um, when, to everybody who's registered. That's right. You can put any comments in that survey, including how much you loved my great jokes tonight. Um, if you like this trivia, we encourage you to check out our next 21 plus event on August 13th. It's going to be a virtual science of spirits with glass vodka. You can learn the science behind the distilling process and taste your way through glass vodka samples and also learn how to mix up a special cocktail for that night. Uh, you can stay up to date on all of our 21 plus events signing up on our e-newsletter at packside.org. Um, and you can also donate at packside.org slash support. Thank you again for everybody participating. I think about it as you help validate the hypothesis that while our buildings are closed, curiosity never closes. Uh, we hope you agree that as the Region Science Center, Pacific Science Center's work is more important than ever. If you haven't already, please consider making a donation to keep our mission going. Earlier, we suggested a donation of $10 for tonight's event. But Zita, you and I were brainstorming some other suggestions uh, around what that donation could look like. Uh, maybe it's a quarter for every question, um, or uh, that would be 30 questions times um, a quarter or 50 cents for a for each question, that would be fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. Maybe incorrect? you could, yeah. Do, maybe you could do a donation based on every incorrect answer you gave um, oh. to support the next generation of trivia players to do better. Nicely done. How about a penny or a half penny for every point that you earn? There's quite a few points earned there by Glowing Raccoon, um, but really, whatever amount it is, uh, know that we're grateful for your support and that we'll use your gift to make sure that curiosity never closes. That's exactly right. Um, now, lastly, everybody who played tonight, you have bragging rights because um, you have more points than anybody who didn't play. But our third, second, and first place winners, you have the most bragging rights. So you can screenshot this podium screen and then DM us on Instagram. It's just at PaxI. We will give you shout outs on social and then you can tag your friends and you can share it on your own social account. Um, and let people know that you are a trivia champ.
Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope that you have enjoyed this evening. Um, we saw some great questions, some great comments. Um, love people. Thank you for participating in the chat also and sharing that Oktoberfest is technically a Marzen. Thank you, Dane, for sharing that nice one. Thing. Sodium polyacrylate was apparently um, first created in the 1960s. So I love that the science learning went beyond the questions and also into the chat as well. Thank you so much for joining all of us tonight. Thank you.